And to our special broadcast tonight, SABC News political editor Mzwandile Mbeje is in conversation this evening with EFF leader Julius Malema, and we take you there live now. Good evening, Mzwandile. Well, uh, very good evening to you, Iman, and of course uh, the viewers. Uh, indeed, uh, it's a very uh, special broadcast, this one. Um, we're speaking to the leader of the third biggest party in the country, uh, Julius Malema, and of course... Uh, uh, he will tell me why he's been avoiding me because uh, we should have spoken a long time ago but uh, here he is so we will have to, to do it this time round. Mr Malema thank you very much uh, it's good to have you thank you so thank you. we've been chasing each other but yeah. you've been running away I've got you now no 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 I think uh, we must be happy that we're meeting now yeah. and, and greetings to yourself and colleagues and the viewers at home, uh, the diaries were refusing to meet, but eventually uh, yeah, we are here. Yes. Good. Well, 10th anniversary, and already your T-shirt is saying yeah. that. Yeah. So you, you look very happy when you walked in here. You <laughs> walked very happy. So you are 10 years old. Absolutely. Uh, we are 10 years old against the doomsayers. Uh, on the 28, we are launching, we're having a public launch yeah. at the Constitutional Hill where we held the uh, first press conference where we announced that we're going to form a, a political party. So we are tracing back our steps to where we started, to where we are now, whether we are in the right direction or did we deviate from uh, the founding uh, objectives of this movement. It was never your intention to form this party. Absolutely. So here you are now. Any regrets? Well, it, uh, I, I don't have any regrets. I think uh, the ANC's decision was a blessing in disguise because the, always, this, the question has always been, uh, do we continue to agitate for economic freedom from within yeah. or should we form an alternative platform where this issue will be agitated without any uh, disturbance or being told that you are violating this or that rule or constitution of the party? Uh, even in the youth league times, yeah. we had actually formed a party within a party. We had turned the youth league into a political party. You will remember, you were there. Um, after interviewing the ANC on any matter, yeah. you'll have to get the youth league opinion yeah. on the same subject. Yeah. Yes. Well, clearly, you are saying no regrets. So Absolutely. That, that expulsion was a... Uh, it was a blessing in and disguise. What happened to my blood is green, is black, green and gold? This is what happened this year. Don't look too far. It's black, green, and gold. And oh. then with a, 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 a spear, mud by the blood of the defeated heroes and heroines of our people. So nothing has changed. Black, green, and gold is right behind <laughs> but, you. But you mean the ANC. Well, uh, remember, you joined the ANC at a very, very young age. In yes. fact, I, I think many people will remember that uh, you caught that bus. Yeah. I think you were nine yes. uh, coming to the funeral of Krisan. At Christian was yeah. between uh, 12 and 13 yeah. when I came here. We were, like many others, we were all born in the ANC. Yeah. But that ANC that we described at that time is not the ANC that we see today. It's a completely a different animal. And what makes me happy is that the ANC that expelled us 10 years ago yeah. is the ANC that is at the helm of the leadership positions today. Uh, 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 which, which it's very clear that when Rupert said at that time uh, the youth league is like an irritating mosquito which needs a doom and Cyril Ramaphosa became that doom mm -hmm. and today he's the president of the ANC because the youth league was an irritation and a threat to their personal accumulation of wealth through uh, being co-opted members of uh, capital by the establishment. Mm -hmm. You, 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 you hit hard when you speak about the ANC. In fact, how you describe them, you actually say they long dead. So yeah. those are normally are your words. Mm. But would you at some point be able to work with them, given the dynamics in the country and how uh, politics of South Africa is, ev is evolving? Well, the ANC figuratively is dead. It's no longer a leader of society. It's no longer uh, that... Um, uh, thinking tank of our society is no longer a reservoir of the best of the best and the advanced detachment in society. Mm -hmm. And therefore, 
you don't expect anything uh, from the ANC. And when we work with them, it's not because we work with them as a leader of society. We work with them as followers because they've become followers of the EFF. They tail behind the EFF. And uh, any new idea or anything that they seek to do uh, in whatever form, they imitate uh, the EFF. So we are not to reject supporters. Uh, the ANC, if it's a support of the EFF, I mean, uh, I mean. Let, let me give you an example. Just yes. this weekend, we went to clean in, in zone, zone 13 in, in Sibuke. Yeah. Cleanup campaign announced we're going to launch Andri Statani cleanup campaign on Saturday. What happens? Boom, the ANC is there on Friday coming to clean the same spot that the EFF has cleaned. Who becomes the leader of society? Is the EFF and the ANC follows? Well, um, but in terms of the electorate, yes. The ANC still has the lion's share of support. Uh, of course, uh, that will be tested again uh, in the next 14 months. Yes. Um, many pundits have been saying, uh, Mr. Malema, perhaps uh, it will be difficult for any party to reach um, outright uh, uh, if in the event, let's say, the ANC dips below 50. Um, would you be able to work with the ANC in the coalition? We talk to everyone if they accept our conditions. Remember at the time, we had given the ANC a very clear conditions of what we want. And the DA correctly so says, if the ANC was to work with the EFF, yeah. uh, they will be in danger. Because they know that the EFF is uncompromising when it comes to its own principles. Once they accept our principles of land expropriation without compensation, mm. free quality education, 24-7 clinics, mm. anyone who wants to implement that together with the EFF were more than willing but the to NC, work with them. But the ANC hasn't accepted that, but somehow you do work with them. No, I, we don't work with the ANC. Let's well, take Johannesburg, yes, for instance. Yes, I was going there. Yes, we were appointed by a mayor of uh, uh, Al Jama, yeah. and that is not ANC. And if the mayor of Al Jama, voted by the majority of, of the people, uh, councillors in the council, decide to invite the EFF to his cabinet, why should we refuse? Because he also invited the ANC. I mean, typical, if you were to birthday yeah. uh, your uh, to have your birthday celebration, mm. and you invite ANC president, and you invite me, mm. what must I do? Must I say, no, I'm not coming because the ANC president is coming. Mm. If I have a contribution to yeah. make, I will come. We welcomed the Al Jama invitation, and it was not an ANC invitation. You know, once upon a time, yes. you once. But I want to correct something okay, that sure. you say the electorate has put the ANC and majority of it, and we all yeah. accept that it's not going to leave anytime soon. After 10 years of its democracy, uh. the ANC had no 10% or so in the electorate of South Africa. Mm. It took them 1912 to 1994 to be where they are. It took less than 10 years of the EFF to be where it is. Well, so I that guess, comparison yeah, is neither here nor there. I guess conditions, are, in the right. no, not, not, conditions are different. No, now. The, the conditions are the same. Yeah. The conditions are the same. The owners of the means of production and the property, yeah. the patterns of property ownership in South Africa are the same. Yeah. What has changed? The whites are still ruling over us, yeah. except that we're given uh, the so-called voting power. But the conditions are the same in in as far as yeah. the, the, the founding of the revolution is concerned. The revolution was not founded on the basis of uh, one man, one vote. It was the, the, the revolution was founded on the basis of the return of the land and the mineral wealth of our people. Has that changed from 1912 to where we are now? The reality is, is it hasn't changed. This thing of yeah. dating white people and thinking that's what we fought for, we didn't fight for that. Okay, I yeah. guess it's, 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 it's an individual's choice, yeah. that one. No, no, it's a, it's a fundamental objective yeah. of the revolution. Yeah. When the 1912 happened, at the core of it has never been dating white people. It has been the return of the land and the wealth. At the core of the differences in the revolution, in the 16th, uh, after the adoption of the Freedom Charter, yeah. the differences were based on what were the strategic objective yeah. of the revolution. And... Others felt the leadership betrayed those things. You once said, um, I think a couple of years ago, you once said if the ANC were to, um, let's say, adopt uh, some of your yes. conditions, there'll be no need for the existence of EFF because Absolutely. it means you'll, you'll become one. Yes. So 
in the event you come closer together with the ANC, um, let's say uh, you then work together in coalitions. Yes. So do you still stand by that statement? Why would the EFF still exist if it has attained its strategic objectives, which are seven non-negotiable cardinal pillars plus the supplementary uh, uh, cardinal pillars? We don't exist for glory. We exist for strategic objectives, which are a political in their nature. And if that has been attained without any pronouncement, the existence of the EFF will become irrelevant. So and you, therefore will die a natural death. So you'd be willing to go back to the ANC and, and allow the ANC to lead? Why would I, as, go, back, why would I go back mm. to the ANC if I've achieved economic freedom in our lifetime? Leave me to look after cattle. Release me. Because I would have achieved that which I joined politics for. Oh, but I didn't join politics for personal glorification yeah. and positions. Mm. If that which I joined po politics for has been achieved, I'm, I must go back home and look after my children and their children and continue my own uh, business. Just a quick one. Yes. Um, you, you, you're very scathing on the ANC, which I think is understandable, mm. given um, where you come from. Let's say uh, 2024, the electorate decides that EFF is the government. Um, just very, in a very perhaps in 30 seconds, or maybe a little more, yeah. what would be the immediate tasks of the EFF to try and correct the situation? How, what will you do to deal with issues like illegal um, immigration, crime, uh, decay, and so many things that are happening in the country? The illegal immigration is not a big problem for our people. Our problem, as we see me and you here, is the electricity problem. Yeah. Let's return ESCOM to its former glory. Let's capacitate it. Let's refuse uh, to uh, dismantle uh, ESCOM and separate yeah. it. Uh, no, I think we'll, yes. we'll get to ESCOM. So um, that's the first one. The yeah. second one, okay. we need to deal with issues of unemployment. How do you deal with unemployment? You need to industrialize. You need to make sure that as many uh, manufacturing uh, companies uh, uh, as possible are uh, allowed to function and you need to open new industries and protect the infant industries that create jobs uh, for our people. Decentralize industrialization and uh, incentivize those who open uh, industries in the remote areas. In that way, you create even jobs for people in the rural areas and in the urban uh, uh, areas. You need to fight crime. How do you fight crime? You need to liberate the generals of the police, not necessarily police, from the criminal syndicate. You need to remove uh, the leadership of the police from the uh, payroll of uh, criminals. One man once told me that the people who get arrested for committing crime is because they don't commit it with the police. If you want to commit crime, you have to work with the police for you to be successful. We've got highly sophisticated and capacitated police in South Africa who cannot be defeated by anything. Once you see them not catching the suspects, you must know that somehow their leadership is involved in the crimes. Where they are not involved, they execute and they make sure that uh, they deliver to our people. Then we need to give our people land. I mean, if you listen to the premier of Gauteng saying, yeah. yes, we give RDP houses, but we need to start giving people pockets of land. That is an acknowledgement that a lot of our people don't need these uh, glorified shacks called RDPs. Mm. They need a piece of land. And don't just give them a small piece of land. Yeah. Give them a, a, a more than what uh, apartheid government gave poor Afrikaners. Yeah. If you go to every Dorpi, there were RDP houses of apartheid, uh, yeah. of apartheid that was given to white uh, poor people. Those yards of those people, of those poor whites, compared to the RDP houses that were given to our people now, the pieces of land that were given to our people through RDP houses, yeah. they go three times into those yards. Yeah. What are you going to do? Because that should be a start so that when we empower you, and you can build a house of your own, you should be able to expand in your own yard. But the RDP has occupied the whole uh, land. You will never expand. So give our people land. Make health work, revive the public health, and make education uh, uh, fashionable, 
and quality education. On the issue of illegal uh, immigration, yes. um, obviously not exclusively, but a lot of crime is also committed by undocumented uh, immigrants. Yes. How will you deal with that, especially given that the EFF is uh, actually, I think, for the future, uh, you are advocating for a borderless yeah. continent? Well, what you are saying is unscientific yeah. because there's no an, an, an uncontrollable crime committed by illegal immigrants. Mm. Uh, Percentage-wise, it's not correct. What is your biggest pro uh, crime? Is contact, a uh, crime that is being committed, is GBV, uh, cash in transit haste, and all those manner of crimes. Go and check who's committing uh, those crimes. Go and check who's committing GBV uh, in this country. Go and check who's marking people here in Johannesburg. So there is, it's not entirely correct. Yes, they are illegal immigrants that commit crime in South Africa, but it's not out of hand. It is not an issue that is uncontrollable. And we might, that's how we are going to get defeated when we deal with crime. If we don't make a proper diagnosis, and the diagnostic report that said illegal immigrants are the ones who are committing crime is going to lead into a wrong prescription of how we solve this illness. So there's no such a problem. Secondly, everybody must have documents. Even me, I'm not an illegal immigrant. I've got documents uh, of being a South African. I've got an address. Let's regularize this so-called illegal immigrants who are here. The, many of them are here because they, they are seeking asylum. Many of them are here because uh, of political reasons. Uh, many of them are here because of economic reasons that are happening in their countries. I'm not going to join a chorus that says we need to push them away. Many of them are not committing any crime. Yeah. So we need to make sure that we regularize it. We are able to uh, put in pro them in proper yeah. places where they can be located. What do you say to some of the people who say, you know what, we love what the EFF is doing, but the manner in which their leader speaks about uh, uh, foreigners, so to speak, uh, somehow dissuades us? Don't vote for me. I don't want that vote. I don't want a xenophobic vote. I love my African people. The same way I love my mother and my grandmother. I'm in love with Africans. Africans are hated everywhere. You go to America, the black skin is a source of hatred. You go to UK, a black skin is a source of hatred. You're asking me to join in in the hatred of black people. I know what a, the hatred of my skin did during apartheid. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be asked that I should stand at the border, at the fence between Limpopo and Zimbabwe and block a mother who's carrying a child, only crossing to get a medication in Musina and going back to Zimbabwe because there is a problem in Zimbabwe. I refuse to join that chorus. And if that will not make me the president of this country, I'm happy that let me die with my conscience being clear that being a president who has emerged through uh, selling out his own soul, nobody asked me to feel like this. Yeah. I feel very strongly about black people. I feel very strong about African continent. And I would rather not be a president because I know for a fact that this is an establishment that is spreading this anti-blackness that we experience everywhere else. It's not true. There's jobs in the restaurants. There's this Lesotho women who are working in our houses. Yeah. Our sisters don't want to work there. They've gone to schools. They want quality jobs. Not that they look down on these jobs. They are saying, I cannot, with a diploma, uh, with N6, with qualifications, go and be a domestic worker. Yeah. We want more. Our, who wants to go and work and be paid with wine in the Cape Farms? Who wants to do that of, of South Africans? Yeah. Let, let me and you take trucks and buses now and go and fetch those foreigners who are uh, working there during harvesting season in the Cape Wines. Let's go and take them and let's see what's going to happen to those Cape Wines. The, all of those grapes are going to get rotten because our people will never agree to work in exchange for wine. Never will I. Nothing will persuade me, not the results of the elections, not a gun on my head, not any form of intimidation will persuade me 
to hate on black people. I will never hate on Africans, not even for votes. Do not vote for me if you don't love Africans and you want me to hate them. I won't do that. Yeah, I think you've, yeah, you, you've very, yes. you've, you've even become emotional when it comes yes, to this. Yes, I, I won't do that. Yeah. Yes. Let's come back home uh, to, to, the, to the issues organizational. Uh, maybe let's touch on um, your friend, by the way, he's the Secretary General. Yeah. So did you congratulate him? Did you call well, him? Well, I met him uh, several times since he won. I congratulated him. Uh, I have nothing against him. And uh, I'm very happy for him. So are you not worried that uh, he may bring that kind of energy that the EFF um, has been tapping on in terms of getting the vote and all those things? I mean, this is someone you worked with. In fact, um, you uh, learned a lot from him as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, uh, you know the good thing with uh, 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 the, the chief is that he's a hard worker. Yeah. Uh, whatever he puts his hands on uh, turns into gold. He works and he doesn't compromise when it comes to work. Mm. He, he is un, un, very unfortunate that he will be trying very hard to wake up a dead horse. And, and it's biologically and scientifically and materially uh, difficult and impossible uh, to do that. And he knows that. He knows that he's going to try, but he knows that it is not possible. He's not going to get anything out of it. Uh, 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 is just going to try with what uh, is remaining. Highly divided organization. Yeah. If you want to kill an organization, you must make the president not work with the deputy president or make the president fight with the secretary general. Look at that deployment committee they announced today. All of it is several people against Paul Mashatil. He's just presiding over something that he will not be knowing anything about it. How do you take Paul Machatile to come to the State of the Nation address as an MP and put him at the back there and then be, be uh, swallowed by Mandela Mandela, that giant? You can't even see Paul uh, when he's sitting because there is some traditional leader wannabe who's sitting next to him there. Let me tell you, the seats in parliament are party seats. You put people according to their seniorities. They are not government seat. They are not parliament seat. So to, to, to show you are dealing with a crisis, you take a deputy president at the back of your party and you put some German cut and deputy chief whip of the ANC in the front row. They are, not, they are no seniors. So what are you dealing with? Already the voters can see uh, there is a problem. So have all speakers speaking of your party. ANC speakers, they are not government speakers. With only that man who sounded like he's not mentally stable from Northwest, the Premier, acknowledging Paul. All the speakers did not acknowledge their deputy president's existence in that parliament. And then you come and tell me Mbalula is going to come and turn these things around because it's Mbalula's responsibility yeah. to look after his officials and make sure both in their image and in their person they are not violated and undermined because that is equal to undermining of the organization just two months yeah. after the conference already this sinful display the president gone against you said we'll talk about escom gone against the anc resolution on where escom should go the secretary general's responsibility among other things is to defend the resolutions of the conference. He has already failed. You've taken a very hard line uh, on the president. Um, you've taken a very tough line, uh, basically saying um, the, the president will not be allowed to speak anywhere um, where you are. So how are you going to do that? Uh, how are you going to work with him going forward? Because he's still the head of state until the next elections. The same way we worked with Zuma. We had no relationship. We, we require no relationship. Uh, with criminals, we require no relationship with uh, people who have no respect of the oath of their office. The president is not in denial that he violated uh, a reserve bank rules, yeah. that he violated SARS, that police went without a police case uh, into Namibia, uh, that the president himself did not declare those dollars to uh, parliament or, or 
uh, whatever process that is required of him uh, to follow in declaration of those things. The president is presiding over the highest form of unemployment, the highest uh, form of uh, 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 the cost of living in our country, uh, the electricity is not there, uh, the state-owned enterprises, all of them, with no exception, have collapsed with very few municipalities that have uh, got a clean audit. So, then, then let's, go to, let's go to a national shutdown. Yes. So that's the reason why you are, you are calling, calling for, for a national shutdown. Yes, on yeah. the 20th of March. Because the people, when the government reaches a point where yeah. it's unable to discharge its responsibilities, mm. we don't express ourselves only through the vote. The picket lines, the yeah. protest, as enshrined and protected by the Constitution, is another form of speaking. And therefore, to, you can't say to call for a shutdown and a pre, a, to call for the president who failed to step down yeah. is an undemocratic practice. It's not true. Are you not worried that uh, that shutdown, for example, will exacerbate the already worst situation? Many people may even lose jobs yes. and uh, that are scarce anyway. So perhaps don't you think it's a bit more responsible to uh, protest in a different way? We had that during apartheid when we were calling for the international uh, sanctions against South Africa, mm -hmm. that the international community uh, must sanction South Africa for its apartheid. And people said, we don't need sanctions, we're already in a worse situation, and therefore uh, it must be business as usual. It, it's not correct. The situation is dire as is, with or without the shutdown. Actually, uh, we stand to be in a more worse situation, and only when the president and the ruling party see the people standing up and say we've given you a chance and you're not coming to the party. That could be a turning point for the better in South Africa. Why should you only see it with one eye? What if it becomes the turning point and things become better for the country with the stepping down of the president and the new president coming in to say I've had you and things will start to be done differently. Not this but, president who says yeah. in every speech, trust me, yeah. trust me. That is the core you know, of the speech. You know, your timing of the shutdown, I mean, I was just looking at the dates. Um, actually, I realized that uh, that date, for example, schools are closed because they will have a long weekend. So, and I assume and a lot more people will take a day off. So do you think, uh, did you time it um, having those into account or you just announced the date? No, schools are not closing. It will not be closed in that week. They no. are going to close on the 23rd, uh, if not the 24th of that month. Of, of, of that month, yes. No, that, yes. Mon that, that Monday, that, that Monday yeah. uh, will be a public holiday for schools. I don't know that. Yeah. And I've not taken that into okay. consideration. But schools will be uh, in full swing. If yeah. that will be a holiday, it will be a special arrangement that will be announced by government. I don't know it. Oh, okay. All I know is that the 20th of March, it's a working day mm. and uh, no one can claim that there's any holiday announced as we sit in here, me and yeah. you. Uh, and our biggest target is not schools. Our biggest target is the establishment which has caused us this misery we find ourselves in. Last time uh, you were in parliament, um, you had an issue with the speaker and uh, calling for the motion of no confidence. Where are you with that? We have filed the motion of no confidence. See, she's incapacitated to run that parliament. You can never call your colleagues animals. Uh, and a, a matter that she's, in, she's now lying again uh, in parliament, that she did not call members of parliament animals, and she can be heard. And if the SABC was fair, on this part, they should be playing that part where she says animals out. Uh, in, you can't say that. Secondly, twice we went to court where the court pronounced itself very clear, including the DA, that police must never enter parliament, in particular the chamber. Yeah. This time they did not just enter parliament. They were brandishing firearms, the guns, and they were wearing a camouflage uniform, and they were hiding their faces. Yeah. That puts members of parliament in danger. Uh, the reason why uh, firearms and guns are banned and sharp uh, uh, weapons are banned in parliament is precisely because parliament is the highest stage of political contestation. And someone might hate you from a distance. And when he comes there with a camouflage uniform and a gun, he gets triggered 
by seeing that Malema has been hating all along and he pulls out a gun and shoots you in parliament. Yeah. That parliament will be silenced from that day. Yeah. No one will speak freely. In the reason why they say mm. police mm. and the army and all of that are not allowed there is because parliament must be the highest stage of political contestation where members of parliament hold the executive accountable mm. without fear of prosecution, without arrest, without any form of intimidation. It must be some mini heaven for politician parliament. And even when yeah. you climb on stage, yeah. You can't say this guy is a threat to the president with a placard, uh, uh, holding a placard high with both his hands. But police to say, to, to confirm that yeah. you are not a danger to them. They always ask you to raise your hands. I didn't wait for that. My hands were already up with a placard yeah. to demonstrate that I'm no danger. I'm, prote I'm protesting. But are you not worried that uh, we have a history in this country where a prime minister was stabbed in parliament? We never had a prime minister in this country. Well, uh, you know what I'm saying. I, I don't about. know what you're Don't associate me with your things. I'm not part of that. No, I'm we, have about no the, yeah. we have no such history. We have no such history. Our history in that parliament yeah. starts in 1994. Okay. Do not tell me about the history I know nothing about. Our history and my president mm. of this country came into being in 1994. Yeah. There's no history of that nature in that parliament. Where's... There is no such history in that hall since we okay. started a sitting okay. but, in that hall. Yeah, but you know, so, you know exactly, you I, know exactly what I'm I trying to say. I don't know what you're talking about. So I don't know. I deny it. <laughs> I deny it. I, there is no <laughs> such history in yeah. South Africa where, one, there was a prime minister. There was never a prime minister. Apart of apartheid South Africa. Now you're you talking. Yeah. Now you're talking. Of apartheid South Africa who was stepped uh, yeah. inside parliament. So there's nothing apartheid there. Yeah. So to compare the conditions are not the same. That thing of uh, offenders committing yeah. in the apartheid parliament was a revolutionary act. It was not a parliamentary duty. It ought to be done. Okay. And, 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 and that makes so its offenders a revolutionary. We, 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 so we would not do that we, 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 in that parliament. Now, yeah. And that parliament can never be. It's actually offensive yeah. for us to compare that parliament with an apartheid parliament. The, the two cannot be the same. And, and therefore yeah, cannot no. be compared. Yeah, I get your point. Yes. And then let's go to matters on Africa. Just, just very yes. quickly. Yes. So yes. We, we actually have run out of time. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> the, the, there'll be the elections in Nigeria and, uh, and elsewhere on the continent. As the EFF, you are very pro-African. Yes. So what, would, what is your... Well, let the best uh, men or women win in Nigeria. No violence. People have had an opportunity uh, to campaign, uh, to contest elections. We have reached a point in the continent where election must not be a source of violence. Mm. Election must be a source of expression of the will of the people, and that will must be uh, defended. Let's see victory celebrations in Nigeria, and we will join them in those celebrations, celebrating democracy and not a particular individual. And the same goes yeah. to all African con uh, countries where elections must never be used as a source to pick up guns. In 30 seconds, uh, last time we spoke, you said at 55, you're exiting the political stage. Is that still the case? Well, and number two, wait, okay. <laughs> and, and number two, um, in next year, there's elections for the EFF. So are you running for the president again? Or are you stepping aside? Just quickly, 30 seconds. Well, uh, at 55, if it was my will, I must go. Uh, I, I've been here from when I was very young. I know no life. I want to also experience life before I die. Uh, so uh, 55 would have meant I've been in politics more than many other people yeah. who, were, who were older than me. Okay. Uh, uh, on, on you, contesting again? I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the map of the union building, what are the exits, the entrances, and all of that, and practicing, because that's where I'm going. Wow. Thank you very much, Thank you very much. Mr. Malema. Wow. That is the leader of the EFF, Julius Malema who basically is saying, uh, as the EFF, so they are ready. So um, in the next few months, they'll be celebrating 10 years of existence. And then he says they are growing. And in fact, he is saying he all he's preparing himself for now is walking to the union buildings. And that is in 14 months' time. We will see if that is true. We'll come back to you. Thank today. you. Thank you.
Ms. Wandile Mbeje, thank you very much for that live interview with the leader of the EFF, Julius Malema. That interview will be available on sabcnews.com momentarily. Uh, I didn't join politics for glorification and don't vote for me if you don't love Africans. The words there of the leader of the EFF, Julius Malema.